But we can also have memos and metaphors. These are information that we generate from our everyday work and everyday thinking. Therefore, when we talk of a memo, all that we are talking about is our write-up of the ideas about the codes and their relationships, how they strike the analyst with coding. So it's a coding that generates the teams and the teams that provide us with the memos. And as we go through the memo, memo means you are right now writing the issues as they present themselves from the teams. And so memos are ideas that are recorded as they happen in the data analysis. And so it gives us a space and place for making comparisons between the data and the course, and the course and the data, the categories as well as other, any, any other concepts that has been generated. And so it is important to that we discover these ideas and work for them. They may have several functions. One of them is that it helps us to map the research activities. This means that we are able to record the decisions as we move from one to the other or try to establish the facts, and these facts will guide us as we go through the processes of conceptualization to completion. Another thing is that we are also extracting meaning from the data. And as we extract the meaning, we are asking ourselves a series of questions about what the data actually means. Now, as we memo, then we are looking at interpretations when we are examining the data. And also, what are the differences and similarities that we are identifying? Are there relationships that are existing that we can explore or we have explored? And can we produce a hypothesis out of what we are analyze. Oh. Then at the same time, as qualitative researchers, we are trying to acknowledge and demonstrate the logical procedures that the data has brought to us. And so we are trying to move from concrete to the actual. And so as we look for things that we can't understand in the data that we have generated from the transcript. We gradually move into what actually exists and the facts. And so it is always necessary to maintain a momentum of what actually we have to do from time to time and to see whether there are variations in the things that we produce as we analyze the data. These are some of the things that you must be thinking about also when you are looking at memoing. The first is open communication. So the researcher or the person dealing with quantitative research has to work with several stakeholders in any given study so that at least you can understand how different people and different personalities tend to understand the data. And also it helps you to also have a consistency and also look at the interconnectedness that exists within the data in terms of both the size and structure of the team that you have put together. So at this point, let us look at the form and structure of memories in a brief. The first is that 
as you write the memos, you stop and analyze your ideas about the course from time to time. It is also a means of helping you to get new issues that at the initial stages you may not have noticed. Then it also helps you to put your study in a technical and methodological format. Sometimes you have to also do the memos as early as possible. And when you write the memos early, it helps you to explore and fill out qualification codes, ask more questions, set out what actually is within the interview, and also find out what people are doing and what is happening to the data. These are basic questions that we normally ask ourselves in the initial stages when, and for many of us, we ask ourselves, how do the structure and the content serve to support, maintain, impede, or change actions and statements, particularly the information we are getting? Then we look at the connections they make and which ones we need to check seriously in order to form part of our analysis. They are also what we term as advanced memos. And advanced memos tell what the topic looks and feels like from various vintage points. And as at the same time, they help us to describe our categories as they emerge and changes with the data. As a way of understanding our analysis, advanced memos also help us to identify the beliefs and assumptions that support the information that we've received from the field, particularly our themes. And so when we consider advanced memos, we advanced memos are means to trace and help us to categorize the data that has not been easily identified within the topic we are discussing. Therefore, what you have to do is to make comparisons by comparing the differences people make in their statements, in their beliefs, in their accounts, in their experiences. And we can also compare them. These are important because, as we always say, when writing memos, it is a means of encouraging us as a means to dig deep into implicit and unstated and condensed meanings. Then at the same time, it is also a means of helping us to analyze the data to the benefit of our general information and also where to put more weight than others. And so sometimes you see that when data is analyzed, some part of the data has more information than other places. Therefore, where you have to highlight in terms of more information, memos are the tools that can help you to do so. Writing memos is a difficult task. Therefore, in memos, we have to have two major types, clustering and free writing, as you write. 
Classroom is just a form of shorthand pre writing that you have to do. And this helps you to write freely the things that you want to look out for and from time to time gives you a preliminary sketch of what you intend to write meaningfully. There are about four major means of, to, of, of writing memos. The first is that we, you start with the main topic or idea at the center of the information. Then you work quickly, then you move out from the nucleus into smaller subclusters. Then you keep all related materials in the DIM subcluster. Then you keep branching out until you have exhausted your knowledge. And as a means of understanding what you have written, you use clustering to play with your material. Now, free writing also involves using your free means of understanding what is being done by writing without stopping. And also, you edit as you go along so that ideas that are generated can be noted. You can work out your grammar the way you think about the information without rushing. The free writing means simply that it means at least you write 10 minutes without stopping. So it's a means of trying to put things in order in a very fast and concrete way. So it helps you to compose fresh material. It is also a means of unlearn past habits and write in a natural way. It also gives you ideas as quickly as possible. It is a means of doing the thing yourself and also knowing which areas have been done wrongly and which areas have been done rightly. Now as you prepare free yourself for free writing, you write as though you are talking to yourself. And so this helps you, helps you to know and understand the issues properly.